Hello friends! Today's agent of deterioration is a hot one, that's for sure. It's the agent that can crumble your world with a single match. Fire! Fire prevention is a top priority in museums and, well, everywhere else too, because not only can it destroy your collection and your building, it can also take lives. So this is an agent that we have to take very seriously to ensure all precautions are in place. Even the smallest little spark can cause a fire, so you have to be super careful and super aware with this one, you guys. This is me putting on a very serious face. First of all, let's talk about the conditions needed to make a fire. I'm going to be pulling up a diagram here that you are all probably very familiar with if you've ever had a firefighter visit your elementary school to teach you to stop, drop, and roll. It's the combustion triangle. Woo! In order to make fire, you need three things. Oxygen, a fuel source, and an ignition source. Without one of these, you won't get any fire. This would also be how you put out a fire, removing one of them. There are different stages of fire development. The pre-flashover stage, the flashover stage, and the post-flashover stage. The pre-flashover stage is when the fire is still small and can be easily extinguished. If it isn't under control within a few minutes, we move on over to the flashover stage. This is when things start to heat up. Literally. The heat gets rather intense and then other combustible things in the room start to catch fire, which will then lead to a fully fledged fire, the post flashover stage. This is a fully developed fire where everything that can catch fire has pretty much caught fire. This can result in major or total loss of collections as well as put the building itself at risk. These fire stages can all move super quickly, which is why it's important to catch the fire as early as possible to make sure it doesn't spread and cause more damage than it already has. Now let's look at what can actually cause a fire in a museum or artifact storage area. We've got outdoor sources like lightning and bushfires if a museum is near a lot of vegetation. There's electrical fire risk with wiring or malfunctioning HVAC systems. We've got the open use of flames in an event, which by God, I hope are all banned in museums by now. Gas leaks are also a risk. We've We've got construction and renovation activities, there's improper storage of flammable chemicals, you get my drift. There's also the super horrible act of arson that needs to be considered. Hopefully no one does that. Most museums and historic monuments are already equipped with extensive fire safety and prevention plans. Fire suppression systems like sprinklers are also important for catching and dousing fires before they get out of hand. But as we've seen in the last few years, we aren't always as prepared as we think we may be. A lot of historic places are made up of highly combustible materials like old dry wood. We all saw what happened to Notre Dame. Ugh, I can't even say her name without feeling like physical pain. Now let's talk about the effect of fire on cultural heritage objects and museum collections. We all know that the ultimate damage is being burnt to a total crisp, but it's not always the same fate for all materials. Objects made from organic materials like paper, textiles, and wood are of course the most susceptible, especially when they're dry. Apart from those, you wouldn't really expect a giant stone sculpture or a piece of pottery to suddenly catch on fire. But that doesn't mean that they can't be damaged. These types of objects can become brittle, they can crack, they can even shatter under the heat. Places can also remelt on pottery, and since we're talking about melting, let's not even get into what can happen with metal objects. Warp City, my friends. And if it's bad enough, complete melting like the Wicked Witch at the West. If something comes in contact with fire, soot and smoke damage can also occur. Soot covers the surface with a black powdery film, and that can really obscure the readability of an object and can also get further rubbed into porous objects if they're being handled post fire. Soot can also attract a lot of other things and become really oily, so you have to remove it as soon as possible because it gets harder to clean as time goes on. Some museums also have some very flammable objects in their collections, like cellulose nitrate film and natural history collections that are stored in those big glass jars in alcohol. The really creepy nightmare things. You might have heard of old film reels being combustible and sometimes causing fires of their own. And if there's a fire in the building and it reaches delicate collections like these, pew! You can't really avoid this though because it's your collection for God's sakes. What are you supposed to do? Not keep the last reel of a Charlie Chaplin film? <laughs> Yeah, right. So how do we reduce our risk of fire and the subsequent damage? Lots of ways. For starters, developing a fire protection plan that includes building safety, employee training, and upgrading fire suppression systems would be really good. Fire safety policy should be known by everyone in the building and regularly practiced so we all know what to do in the event of an emergency. You should make sure to be using non-combustible or fire resistant materials with everything you do, use fire doors, and keep flammable dangerous things away from combustible delicate things. And always have smoke detectors. I could go on, but essentially it involves a lot of risk assessment, building maintenance, and forethought. 
Different countries and museums will have different fire regulations, so it's always a good idea to look into those when making your own fire protection plan. Every place has different risks that need to be assessed. There are also a bunch of different fire suppression systems like fire extinguishers, water sprinklers, dry pipes, wet pipes. There's also gas suppression where a combination of inert gases are released to suppress the oxygen in the room in order to extinguish the fire. Remember that triangle? No oxygen equals no fire. They all have their pros and cons, so it's really up to the discretion of the building manager and the collections team. One quick thing I will say about them though is that a lot of planning has to be done when installing a sprinkler system because if it goes off it'll soak your collection and water is another agent of deterioration which we'll be talking about next time. So there you have it friends, another agent of deterioration for the books. This is by far the scariest one, for our lives anyways, and I promise the rest will be less life-threatening and much cooler to handle. If you like that video go ahead and smash that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on all the other agents of deterioration. Big thanks to all of my patrons over on Patreon. If you like the channel and you want to support it, head on over to Patreon and become a patron. The link to that is in my description down below. Here are all my socials and I'll see you all in three days where we talk about water. Stay dirty, my friends.